Dear brothers and sisters, redemption is near. The Lord Jesus is coming very soon and we should be very happy, rejoicing every day. Meanwhile, there is a crisis coming and for that crisis, we must be prepared. The final events will be rapid ones and great changes are soon to take place in this world. Religious leaders and government officials, but government leaders joining forces to combat against God, against his commandments, against God's law. And in this great crisis called the Sunday law crisis, the powers of the earth give all authority to the beast of Revelation chapter 13. They give the, their allegiance also to Rome. And in this great struggle, the United States is the leader and the whole world follows the example of the United States. But together with the United States, there is China. The United States and China work hand in hand together in service to the papacy, serving and obeying the Bishop of Rome. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the prophecies of Revelation chapter 13 and 14. And humbly we pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us Help us understand it and help us to treasure it and help us to remain faithful to our Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. There is the news. Recently, the Pope traveled to Mongolia. And what was the purpose of Mongolia's trip? He says, with China on his mind. Pope visits tiny Catholic flock in Mongolia. So what was the purpose? The big nation, China. But we will understand that China has been working in close relationship with the papacy to bring about the new world order, to bring about the unification of religions and to continue with the agenda that the Pope is leading or commanding to bring about the papal supremacy to the whole world and to bring also about the Sunday law crisis. And we will study about this in this uh, sermon. It says in the book, Last Day Events, page 125, the Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue and many who unite in this movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is standing. So many of the religious leaders and many of the government officials they know that something fishy is going on. They know that something is going on that is not truthful, that is not honest, and that is not good. Something is wrong with, with, the, with the way politics and religious issues are going on in the world. And we know that this is the Sunday law movement that will eradicate religious freedom, that will destroy freedom of conscience, and that will bring also persecution against God's commandment keeping people. The Sunday movement is to bring about the supremacy of the Pope, the supremacy, the papal supremacy that was lost and there will be persecution against God's commandment keeping people. And this is what is happening in darkness. What does it mean to be happening in darkness? It means that it's done in secrecy. 
there is a news that says missionaries say they are short of papal visit to Mongolia. A chance to introduce the faith, maybe one of those crusades, and they have this horse here like a crusader. As a majority Buddhist nation, most people don't know who the Pope is or why he is here. Most people don't know what's going on or how important it is. And that's the case of many Christians. They don't know what is going on. They can only see that something is wrong in the decisions made by government officials. They can only see that there are alliances, that they are aligning together, aligning together nation with nation and religion with religion. And they know that something is going on, but they don't really know what's happening. And we know that the Sunday law crisis is happening in darkness. In the book, The Last Day Events, 126, we continue the quote. There are many, even of those engaged in this movement for Sunday enforcement, who are blinded to the results which will follow this action. They do not see that they are striking directly against religious liberty. And now I want to appeal to those who work in the government, because I know that there are good people working in the government that are also searching for truth. And I want to appeal now, because there is only one true God and his law that must be kept holy. But in this world, all religions joining together, coming together with government, they will force Sunday as a day of worship and they will force the conscience. They will persecute those who do not want to follow in the steps of Rome. In Ephesians chapter 5, 11, we understand what does it mean for the Sunday law to be done in darkness because it's a movement that is happening in darkness. In Ephesians chapter 5, 11 and 12, we understand. And it says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What does it mean, unfruitful works of darkness? Verse 12, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So to be done in darkness means to be done in secret. Secret societies, governments and religions doing something in secret. This in the Bible in Revelation chapter 17, Revelation chapter 18 is called fornication. Fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with the papacy. This paper says, if China doesn't come to Rome, Francis goes to Mongolia. Francis will certainly talk again about the need for an inclusive political system. This is what they want, inclusive global system able to cherish every single life in the Sunday law, every single life will be, will be forced to receive the mark of the beast. So every single life support justice, they say, and peace for all and nurture natural resources. And we will understand what do they mean by natural resources to protect natural resources. This paper says Pope Francis discusses ecological conversion with Buddhist monks from Cambodia. And this is in preparation for the Mongolian visit, the papal trip to Mongolia. This is in preparation because Mongolia is Buddhist, is a Buddhist nation, but so also is China. And this paper says he commended the delegation which included civil society from Cambodia, 
for choosing ecological conversion as the theme of their visit to Rome, focused on interreligious cooperation. So this is a cooperation by religions to bring about ecological conversion. That means spiritual way of looking at things, how to solve the problem of a climate change in this earth. So they say religion has a, a vital role to play in harmony with government officials. And then it says, I am also certain that your meeting with the officials of the dicastery for interreligious dialogue will provide an opportunity to explore further ways to promote ecological conversion through the initiatives undertaken by Buddhist Christian dialogue, both in Cambodia and in the whole region. So this is a plan for, for Asia, but I would say it's not only for the region in Asia, but for the whole world, because they want ecological conversion. And they have already stated before that this is about Sunday as a day of rest to protect the earth. And this is going to be done by religious leaders in harmony with government officials in the whole world. This paper says Buddhist delegation from Taiwan visits Pope Francis for interreligious exchange. And this is another country from the region of Asia where the Pope was going to visit. It says a delegation of more than a hundred monastics from Taiwan's United Association of Humanistic Buddhism recently met with Pope Francis at the Vatican. The conversation during interfaith gathering, which the Holy See described as an opportunity to promote interreligious exchange and communication in the post-pandemic era, served to highlight the role of religions and spiritual traditions in fostering fraternity through a culture of encounter. So they want one religion together, one religion together to promote the global plan, plan for peace and safety, peace and security. And this continues, the pontiff invited the delegation to hold a three minute prayer of silence for world peace and for the pers perseverance to resolve international conflicts and illuminate the darkness in the world. It's interesting because they use the word darkness, but they are doing in secrecy in darkness, but they say to illuminate the world. And it's also interesting because these are two religions together worshiping and praying as if they are praying to the same God. Remember, there is no other God than the creator God whose law is eternal. This paper says Pope, Pope Francis cites Buddha in plea for interfaith harmony. And this is in Mongolia, as he has been visiting this past week. On Sunday, Pope Francis underscored the importance of religious unity to counteract the surge of ideological fundamentalism that fuels violence, drawing upon the Buddha's teachings during his address in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. And this is interesting also because they want to make the Lord Jesus appear as if he is at the same level of prophets or at the same level of humans. But the Lord Jesus, he is the creator God. He cannot be compared to other humans. But this paper says he denounced fundamentalism and ideological constraints, stressing the role in unsettling global peace. In this religious gathering, also Latter-day Saints speaks at interfaith events hosted by Pope Francis. 
And not only Latter-day Saints, many other Protestants, religious leaders were also gathering there to listen to other religious figures that came together. This paper says Pope Francis urges religious dialogue to fight fundamentalism. If you believe that there is only one true God, according to other religions, that's fundamentalism. And they say this is hatred, this is hate speech. If you believe that there is salvation only through one man, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God himself, then they would say that's fundamentalism, that's extremism, and, and they say it cannot be tolerated. But this is very interesting also. The United States and China are the major role players. They are the major players in this scenario, in this world, because the world is a, a theater where the inhabitants are the players. But the major players are the United States and China. And we will see in this presentation because the whole world follows the example and the lead of the United States. And here we see John Kerry meets Francis and appreciates Pope's concern for climate change issues. We will also understand that climate change issues is about Sunday law issues. It's about the Sunday law crisis. This paper says Kerry, who is a practicing Catholic, met with Pope Francis privately. Remember, this is done in darkness. The Sunday law movement is in secret. So they met privately at the Vatican on June 19. This is committing fornication, the kings of the earth. And then he says, it is his fourth official private meeting with the Pope. Imagine this, the fourth official private meeting from the United States government official with the papacy, which is a head of state. So this is the fourth. And he says, and it is the first high ranking politician to meet Francis since release from hospital for a surgery to repair an abdominal hernia. But this is also interesting. Why? Because he is praising Pope Francis for writing the encyclical Laudato Si. And Laudato Si is the document that was the hedge, that was the, the tool that the governments used to agree on climate change, to have a resolution, to have an agreement, which is called the Paris Agreement, which is protection of the earth by resting on Sunday, because that's part of the document. And this is part of the agenda and part of the agreement that to protect the earth, you must set aside time for prayer, religions together, time for rest, Sunday as a day of worship. That was the plan and that's the whole plan in Laudato Si. And this is the American government, the United States government praising the beast of Revelation chapter 13 for writing an encyclical that is urging the whole world to keep Sunday as a day of rest and also as a day of worship as we will see. So Kerry was in praise of Pope Francis 2015 encyclical Laudato Si on care for our common home and on the need to protect the environment, combat climate change and reduce the need and use of fossil fuels. Now, this paper says Pope Francis is writing a second environmental document after Laudato Si. And it's interesting because it will be released in October this year. It says Pope Francis announced during an audience with lawyers on Monday that he is writing a second part of his 2015 environmental encyclical Laudato Si. The Pope said 
With this new writing, he is updating Laudato Si to cover current issues. What current issues? The current issues are that all religions must worship together, that all religions must promote worshiping together. And not only that, that governments and religious leaders must work together to implement the Paris Agreement, to bring about Sunday worship. Let us read Article 237 of Laudato Si, because this is the important document that the governments of the earth received prior to signing the France, the, the France, the France or, or the Paris Agreement in 2015, on, on, on December the 12th of 2015. So this is the, the encyclical. It says, on Sunday, this is to protect the earth from climate change. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist, this is worship, Sunday as a day of rest and Sunday as a day of worship. Participate in the Eucharist. And he says, has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, so he is e equaling, he, he is, uh, he is comparing the Sunday as, a, as the, the Jewish Sabbath. But that cannot be. But he says, Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves and with others and with the world. So this is the plan. Laudato Si is about Sunday rest and Sunday worship. And this is what the United States government is praising. The document that is the preamble of the, of the national and global Sunday law, a law that will command all citizens of the earth to rest on Sabbath or on the Sabbath, they call it Sabbath Sunday, but which is the, the fourth Sabbath, the fourth Sabbath, the Sunday. And they will command that all citizens of the earth should be worshiping together with other religions, but they have to be worshiping on Sunday. And this is what the United States government is praising the Pope for writing Laudato Si. And this paper says China and United States climate partnership vital despite differences, says John Kerry. When did he say this? When he was meeting in privacy, when he was meeting in private with the Pope in Rome, he says United States and China must be working together as partners. And after the meeting in Rome, in the Vatican, John Kerry arrives in China to revive climate talks. And this is in preparation for the papal trip to Mongolia. Why? Because they want Sunday as a day of worship for the whole region and for the whole world. He says, John Kerry arrives in China. And what is the purpose? This paper says, under record heat wave, United States and China unstick climate talks. And this is John Kerry again. He says now both the United States and China are planning two more meetings before COP28 in November. So there will be two more meetings. Even as we talk, there will be two more meetings in China because these two great nations are the most powerful nations in the earth that will command the world to follow after the beast, to wander after the beast. And it says they will be talking about topics like better integrating China's booming renewable sector into its coal dominated electric grid and tackling methane emissions among other things that we know that they are talking in privately because this is a plan by Rome through the United States and China and the rest of the world 
to bring about Sunday as a day of rest and as a day of worship for all religions and for all governments and for all, for all citizens of the earth. As it says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 14, talking about the second beast, the United States, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. What is the image of the beast? Is the union of church and state that will urge its citizens to follow religious dogma, to be obedient to religious doctrines. Church and state, to, and state together commanding religious doctrines. And in this case, commanding Sunday as a day of worship. That's the image of the beast. And this paper says climate action requires interfaith collaboration. So this is now governments, society, and religions together in collaboration, interfaith, worshiping together, praying together. And this is what they call climate change action in collaboration, all governments and all religions together. This paper says, as morning storm clouds cleared over Lake Michigan, August 17, leaders from more than a dozen Christian faith traditions gathered by the shore to sign an ecumenical declaration on the care for creation. The event was part of the 2023 20, Parliament of the World's Religions held in Chicago, August 14 to 18. The 13 leaders who signed this particular declaration were but a small sampling of the approximately 200 belief systems and 6,000 religious leaders represented at the parliament. So they, this is something serious because this is from the United States and they want more organizations like this, planning events like this, bringing religions together, praying together, and urging the governments together to do something about climate change. And they will be urging Sunday as a day of rest, as we have already noticed in the document Laudato Si. And the Bible already says that this is about a law that is done by the earth against God's law. In Psalms 94 verse 20 says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frames mischief by a law? What law? Sunday worship law, that's, that's framing mischief. That's framing mischief, that's wickedness because it's a law of humani humanity not the law of God. The law of God, on the other hand, in Psalms 119, and in this case, 150, the verse 150, they draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. So there are two laws, the law of Sunday worship and the law of God that commands to worship on Saturday the seventh day of the week, the true Sabbath of God, which is also the sign of God, the seal of God. This paper says United States Special Envoy John Kerry in China again, to find common ground on climate change. Common ground on climate change. That's the common ground. And climate change is like a religious doctrine. It says the United States and China will look to revive efforts to combat global warming this week in bilateral meetings that observers hope will raise the bar on ambitions ahead of UN sponsored climate talks 
in late 2023. So the United States and China, these two governments are planning together the, the great event that will take place in November, December 2023 in Abu Dhabi. And this is the United Nations, all nations together for the Sunday law done in secrecy. This paper says Pope Francis urges world leaders to do more to tackle climate change and the whole world will be obedient. The United States government is obedient. The Chinese government is obedient and they are subjects to the papacy. They are subjects to the kingdom of the Pope. They are subjects, they are obedient and they do service to the Pope as do all the nations because the Bible is clear that all nations will wander after the, after the beast. This paper says Pope Francis said on Sunday that recent heat waves across many parts of the world and flooding in countries such as South Korea show that more urgent action was needed to tackle climate change. And we see many catastrophes. We see many things happening. And dear brothers and sisters, this is urgent. It is urgent for us to understand the third angel's message because the third angel's message calls us to, to shun the mark of the beast. And this paper says United States General Mark Miley and Pope Francis discuss war in Ukraine. What are they discussing? Because this is a military general, but what, what are they discussing? And this is also a Roman Catholic, practicing Roman Catholic. It says Miley, a Catholic, said the visit meant a great deal to him According to Miley's spokesperson, Colonel Jay Butler, and he had a bag of rosaries for the Pope to bless so that he will bring religion to the military. And he will command the military also to, to follow in the steps of the Pope, to worship, to honor the Pope. This paper says environmental minister Stephen Gilbert heading to China for climate talks. And this is a minister from Canada. And it's interesting because this took place after the general from the government, from the military of the United States government met with the Pope. And it's not only the minister from, from Canada, but also the United States official gov government officials in this gathering in China. And this paper says, according to a statement from Gilbert's office, the minister will be in the country from August 26 to August 31 to attend the China Council for International Cooperation on Environment and Development. So this is the plan. Remember, this is the Sunday law movement in darkness. And then it says, he, he will follow in the wake of other government officials and leaders from the United States, France, Germany, and the European Commission who have visited China since Beijing lifted COVID-19 restrictions a couple of months ago. So here we see the United States also. And remember, they are doing many, many summits, many, Many, many meetings before the big, the big plan, the big program, the big event coming in November. And this is a government official from China. China, the, United, the European Union and the United States could cooperate to combat climate issues, says Envoy. And this paper continues saying China, the United States and Europe complement each other in a lot of ways in terms of green technology and markets. So they have broad prospects for cooperation 
Xi Zhenghua, China's special employee on climate change, said ahead of the United Nations Climate Summit later this year. So they are making preparations. And this is a big event that they, they hope and they expect that the Pope will also be present, even as he was present in the United States in 2015, when there was the big gathering of all nations in preparation for the Paris Agreement that was achieved in December of that year. And that was also the, the year that Laudato Si was released. And this year, 2023, Laudato Si, volume two will be released just prior to the November United Nations Sunday Law Movement in Darkness that will be taking place uh, this year, at the end of this year. So this paper continues saying, this government official from China, Xi, emphasized that China is willing to work with the United States. And not only willing, they have been working in secrecy for many years. They have been pretending to be enemies. They have been pretending to do war, economic war, war economic sanctions against each other. They have been pretending to be in animosity in war when they have been working together to, to follow the commands of the papacy. So the, it says the United States, China, and the European Union, and the vast number of developing countries are to advance multilateral climate cooperation. This is government of China saying, the government is saying the whole world must cooperate multilaterally, cooperate in this Sunday movement. Remember, it's a Sunday movement done in secrecy. And this paper says Mongolia, a strategic destination for Pope Francis in Asia. And I would say for the whole world, because the United States and China are the two biggest nations, biggest economies working under the guidance of the papacy, serving the dictates of the Pope. And this is Pope Francis, whose way has already been prepared by China and the United States for the visit in Mongolia. And for what purpose? For the purpose of preparing the big event coming in November in United Arab Emirates. So this paper says Mongolia looks to rise out of China and Russia's shadow. And it says in the last week of June, Mongolian Prime Minister Lassan Namsrain Oyun Erdening went to Beijing. He went to China and he met with Chinese President Xi Jinping at the Great Hall of the People and came away with a raft of agreements deepening economic and trade ties with his southern neighbor. Imagine he went to meet with the president of China and they signed many agreements. But what happened after? It says, but around the same time, Mongolian officials in the capital Ulaanbaatar met with Jose Fernandez, the United States government under secretary of state for economic growth, energy and the environment. And they signed a memorandum of understanding to collaborate on, on cultivating a supply chain of critical minerals and rare earth elements. So they met together after meeting with officials from China, they met together with officials from the United States and they are connecting the, the dots because this is about climate change and climate change is about Sunday law. 
And this is interesting because the Mongolian government, the president, the prime minister meets with at the Pentagon with, uh, with, a, with this general, he says, United States Mongolia discuss military to military relations during Pentagon visit. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin III met with Mongolian Prime Minister Lusanam Rain Oyumerden for talks on the military to military relations between the two countries. And it's interesting because they did not talk about military relations or military endeavors together. They, they talked about other things also. This paper says it was the first time a Mongolian prime minister has visited the Pentagon. And then continue saying Mongolia is a nation surrounded by Russia to the north and China to the south. The prime minister referred to the United States as Mongolia's third neighbor. So they say Russia and China are the, the primary neighbors, but the United States is the third neighbor. And then listen to this. I emphasize, he said, that the United States is not only our strategic third neighbor, but it is also our guiding pole star for Mongolia's democratic journey. What does he mean? Uh, our guiding pole star? That means that they are following the example of the United States, even as it is prophesied. In Testimonies for the Church, volume six, page 18, he says, as America, the land of religious liberty, shall unite with the papacy, enforcing the conscience and compelling men to honor the full Sabbath, the people of every country on the globe will be led to follow her example. So when the prime minister of Mongolia says that the United States is the guiding pole star, they are saying the United States is their leader. The United States is the one that they follow and they will follow the United States in enforcing the conscience also, commanding and forcing all the Mongolians to worship on Sunday, because this is the prophecy and this is the Sunday law. And this is the, the mark of the beast. Sunday law, Sunday worship by law. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, we read, talking about the second beast, the United States, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And remember, we must shun the mark of the beast. We must reject the mark of the beast or we are lost. This paper says Mongolia wants to get closer to the United States without rattling eternal neighbors, Russia and China. And of course they, are, they know what they are doing. They know that all governments of the earth work together in darkness and they do service to the papacy. Even Russia and China, they work together in alliance, secret alliance, with the United States and Europe and the whole world, wandering after the beast. This paper says, the United States is not just our trading neighbor, says the prime minister of Mongolia, it's the North Star for Mongolia's market economy and democratic values. So this is the North Star they want to follow after the second beast. And by following after the second beast, they are following after the first beast. Remember in prophecy, a beast is a superpower. A beast is a kingdom, as it is written in Daniel chapter seven and Daniel chapter eight. Revelation chapter 14, verse nine. This is the third angel's message. And for this message, we must, we must live we must proclaim, 
Revelation 14, verse 9, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, remember the mark of the beast, in his forehead or in his hand, verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. So this is a very serious issue. Do not receive the mark of the beast. And we know that the mark of the beast is Sunday as a day of worship. And then let, let us read. Let us read. Let, let us hear it from, from, the, from the horse's mouth. It says the mark of the beast. Sunday is our mark of authority. That's why the book of Revelation had prophesied many centuries ago that the mark of the beast is coming that the people of God should reject it, should not receive it, because they will be receiving punishments from God if they receive the mark of the beast. But here, Cardinal James Gibbons in the Catholic record, London, Ontario, September 1, 1923, he wrote, Sunday is our mark of authority. And then it says, the church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. So they say, this is, this is papal supremacy. And this is the supremacy of a tradition of men above the writings of God. They, that, that's why they blaspheme against God, against his name, against, against his throne, against his temple. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 12, clearly says, that there is a sign, that there is a seal, and the sign of God is the true Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, Saturday, commonly called. He says, moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. And this message is for you, my brother, my sister, even if you are working for any government in the world, this message is for you. God has a Sabbath, a true Sabbath. But the governments of the world, they are pushing, they are, they, they are urging the world to rest on the wrong day, on the day that has no sanctity at all. The only true holy Sabbath is the seventh day, as it is called Saturday. And this is a paper from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It says, which day, which is the Sabbath day? This is the question. And the answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. So they know that Saturday is the true Sabbath day. And then they ask another question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? And they answer themselves, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. They say it clearly. This is why the Bible says the mark of the beast, but the mark of the beast is blasphemy against God, blasphemy against God, because the only true supreme is the creator, the Lord Jesus who died for us, because the law of God cannot be transgressed, cannot be altered, cannot be broken, or else the punishment is death, the wages of sin is death, and sin is the transgression of the law. This paper says United States officials are straining to China. Will Beijing return the favor? United States officials streaming to China. Why? Because they are two subjects, two, two subject nations subject to the papacy. They are servants of the Pope. And yet, when the Pope has traveled to Mongolia, he sent a message to the Chinese government saying, this paper says, Catholic Church has no political agenda. Pope's veiled message to China during Mongolia visit. Is that true? 
The Catholic Church has no political agenda. The Lord Jesus says, be careful that nobody deceive you. Matthew 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. And this is a deception because the Catholic Church is not just a church. It is also a state. It's a kingdom. It is a government. It is a political system. And the head is a politician. And politicians, one day they speak, they do one kind of talk, the second day do another talk. Sometimes they do like that. And sometimes they deceive, they lie. And in this case, this politician is lying. That's why he, he and the whole system is called the man of sin, the son of perdition, and he is lying. Why? We will see why. This paper says, Pope in Mongolia sends apparent message to China on Catholic claims. And he says, Ulaanbaatar, Pope Francis in words that appear to be aimed at China rather than the neighboring country he was visiting, said on Saturday that governments have nothing to fear from the Catholic Church because it, because it has no political agenda. So this is what he's saying. Governments should not fear from the Catholic Church because it has no political agenda. But this is a big lie because the Bible says the following in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come, Haitha, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So this is a woman, but this is a prostitute. Remember, a woman represents a church in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 3. Zion or the people of God are represented by a comely, beautiful, holy woman. But this is a whore. This is a church that is blasphemous. This is a church system that blasphemes against God. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 2 says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. The Sunday law is done in darkness. This is what is called secret fornication. The kings of the earth are the presidents, the prime ministers, the mandatories of the earth. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with this woman. And this woman is a church and this church is a harlot. And then he says, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So the whole earth will follow after this woman that is a harlot, that is a church, that is a blasphemous system. And not only a church, verse three says, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast. So here we see that it is a woman that is also a political system. That is also a, a state that is also a kingdom, because in, as, as I said previously, in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 8, a beast is to represent a kingdom. And the papacy is a kingdom, and they are, they are kings. And the cardinals, they are princes of the church, and they are kings. This is a kingdom. This is a world kingdom. And this is the most powerful kingdom on this earth representing humans, but the kingdom of heaven is not of this earth and God has his kingdom in his people. So here, when the Pope says that he has no political agenda, he is lying because he represents as a head of the church, as a head of a religion, and also as a, he is represented as a head of state. That's why the woman is riding upon the beast. That means church and state. Church stuff and political stuff. This paper says, after summit joined by China, United States and Russia 
Indonesia's leader warns of protracted conflicts. What kind of conflicts? If they are working together, committing fornication with the harlot of Revelation 17 and, and 18, they are committing fornication together. They are joining together. They are allied. They are, they are friends, but pretending to be enemies, pretending to be at conflict when they are serving their master. And it's interesting because around the same time, this, this, this day, when they were meeting together in Jakarta, all these governments, Russia, Indonesia, China, and the United States gathering together in Jakarta, Indonesia, the government of China said the following. It says, China hopes the United States will create conditions for climate cooperation. This is what says the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China. Will, the United States will create conditions for climate cooperation. This is what they want. China, as a government, they want the United States to create the conditions for the Sunday law. But remember, China has created the conditions for, for global governance, for one world religion, for the new world order, and for all the agendas of the papacy, China has been playing a big role, but it is the United States, the police of the world. And this paper says in, in Testimonies for the Church, let us read again, verse, uh, volume six, page 18. As America, the land of religious liberty, shall unite with the papacy in forcing the conscience and compelling men to honor the full Sabbath, the people of every country on the globe will be led to follow her example. And here we see China. China will be led to follow the example of the United States in commanding the citizens to worship on Sunday to rest on Sunday, and not only in their countries, the whole globe will follow the lead of the United States. This paper says G20 leaders, and right now as I speak, the G20 leaders are gathering together in India, and not only the G20 leaders of, the, of, of government, but also G20 of religions. So this paper says, global citizen, the world is in crisis. We need you to act on poverty, hunger, and Sunday law. They say climate emergency. So they need urgency to bring about the Sunday law crisis. That's what they are planning. And right now on this day, it says, the United Nations Secretary General has urged the group of 20 leaders to send a strong message on climate change, to send a strong message on the papal Sunday law agenda. This is what they want and this is urgent because they are preparing the table for the November United Nations summit for the Sunday law in secrecy. So this paper says, New Delhi, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Friday urged the group of 20 top economic powers, which are responsible for more than 80% of the emissions that cause global warming to use their, week, their weekend summit to send a strong message on climate change. So this is, the governments of the earth pushing, urging the top 20 G20 nations to do more on climate change. And this is a command from who? From the Pope of Rome. Remember the commandments of God on the other hand, in Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 20 says that the Sabbath, the true Sabbath is the sign of God. 
He says, and hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord thy God. So, my brother, my sister, God has a people on earth that honors the Lord Jesus, that worships the Lord Jesus, and we honor the Lord Jesus by keeping his commandments. The Lord Jesus said, and he is God. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. And we are willing to keep God's commandments. And remember, even though China and the United States and Europe and the whole world wandering after the beast, and they will be implementing Sunday as a day of worship. Remember, this is the mark of the beast. This is the mark of the authority of Rome. They will be forcing the conscience and they will be destroying religious liberty, but God's commandment keeping people will be faithful to God, to his commandments. Let us pray and let us be happy because the Lord Jesus is indeed coming very soon. Even as we speak, the movements, the final movements are rapid ones. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for present truth, for the third angel's message. We thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit with us. We praise you, dear Father. We praise you, dear Lord Jesus, and we praise you, dear Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of your Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And please continue to pray for this ministry. Thank you so much. Amen.